Welcome to the Life of Christ. My name is Pastor Bill, and this is Antelope Christian Center's midweek online Bible study, The Life of Christ. Our focus tonight is upon prayer. And by the way, let's start with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together, to have fellowship to worship together, and to share together, to pray for one another, and to open the word of God and to study together. I pray your blessing as we have Bible study, house to house, online. Allow the anointing of the Holy Spirit to speak through our study, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Again, thanks for joining us. As we study the life of Christ, one major theme any serious student will recognize is the lifestyle of prayer that Jesus has. When Jesus ascends to be with the Father, he actually directs the apostles to spend time waiting upon God in prayer. That's right, did you ever consider the last assignment that Jesus gave to the apostles was to have a prayer meeting. That's very special. Well, when we talk about prayer, unlike other topics, sometimes we don't recognize the different layers there are to prayer. Uh, in other areas like seasons, we recognize that not all seasons are the same. Of course, right now we're enjoying spring, but soon it'll be summer not so comfortable. And then fall will roll around and before we know it, it'll be May one more time. It'll be winter one more time. Now with prayer, not all prayer is the same. Let me say that again. Not all kinds and styles of prayer are exactly the same. There's tremendous variety in our prayer. Tonight, I want to take just a moment and study with you three kinds of prayers we find as we study the work of the Holy Spirit. Again, Jesus ascends to be with the Father and heaven releases the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Jesus goes up and the Spirit of God comes down. It's an incredible story found in Acts chapter 2. Now, around the outpouring of the Holy Spirit are three different examples of prayer. Find your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 1. We're going to look at the prayer that I refer to as praying and waiting. Praying and waiting, that's one kind of prayer, not to be ignored. And then, of course, there is prayer with authority. Very, very different. And we're going to see it in action tonight. And finally, the last prayer we're going to look at is a prayer of actually asking and praising and sharing all wrapped up at the same time. Three different kinds of prayer. Our first prayer we want to look at is found in Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Remember, Jesus' final instructions to the apostles to have a prayer meeting. That prayer meeting would last 10 days. 10-day 10 prayer meeting. With your Bibles open to Acts chapter 1, verse 14, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and this is what it says. They met together, united in prayer. And during this time, there were about 120 believers. What was happening at this prayer meeting? Well, I've been to a few all-night prayer meetings, and we spend uh, days promoting an all-night prayer meeting, and we have a prayer list and a prayer schedule and special music and, and someone sharing. It's got quite an agenda uh, to do a 24-hour prayer meeting, inviting different ones with different themes. This 10-day prayer meeting 
had none of that. It wasn't asking God for anything. There is a kind of prayer that in American culture can very easily be overlooked. That's the prayer illustrated in Acts chapter 1. Do you recognize the outpouring of the Holy Spirit follows this prayer of waiting? Sometimes we're so quick to go to God with our list that we ignore or neglect just waiting upon the Lord. Some authors have actually written that the most powerful prayer meeting in human history regarding man, not Christ, is this prayer meeting. This prayer meeting without music, without an agenda, without speakers, without anything except waiting upon the Lord. If you and I sit down and call the prayer meeting for people just to wait upon the Lord, it might last 20 minutes or an hour. But can you imagine the significance of this prayer meeting of doing nothing but waiting upon God? And the outcome was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me move quickly past the day of Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, where 3,000 are beautifully recorded as being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Let me move past the day of Pentecost up to Acts chapter 3. And in Acts chapter 3, we now discover in action a powerful prayer which is a prayer of authority. If I could say anything and share anything with you tonight, it would be this is that, that the sequence of the prayer of authority follows the prayer of waiting and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What I'm speaking of, of course, is in Acts chapter 3, Peter and John were on the way to the temple, and on their way they came to a lame man. We later discovered this man had been lame for 40 years. Give me money, he says. And instead of giving what he asked for, they gave him prayer. Oh, what a powerful message. I would love to preach one day. Not giving people what they ask for, but giving them what they need. This man did not ask for a miracle. This man did not ask for prayer, but they, having waited upon the Lord, remember how important that first kind of prayer is, waiting upon the Lord? Waiting upon the Lord, soaking before the Lord, put them in position for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, put them in position to pray with authority. Now, oh, I regret to say that some folks believe that praying with authority is praying loud and being very animated and being very demonstrative. And that's praying with authority. No, praying with authority comes with waiting upon God, being filled with the Holy Spirit and when Peter looked at that man and gave one of the shortest prayers in the Bible, it's actually recorded, silver and gold have I none, but that that I have I give unto thee in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And you know the rest, the incredible miracle. This prayer is found in Acts chapter 3, verse 6. We've looked at two kinds of prayers that are very different, but are connected. The first, waiting, the prayer of waiting before the Lord, which positions you for the prayer of authority. Try to have authority without waiting upon the Lord, and uh, you're trying to run an automobile without any gasoline in it. You're not going to get very far. The authority comes from waiting upon the Lord. The authority comes 
from the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, normally you think of a miracle as well. Everybody lived happily ever after. They were all satisfied and excited. Well, in this story, that's not what happens. The religious leaders, the priests and the elders, they get very upset. In fact, Peter and John wind up spending an entire night in jail. Not a very way, great way to have a meeting to end it with being thrown into jail. Then they're questioned and later released. They share their testimony. 5,000 people give their hearts to the Lord. Beautiful story. But here's the next prayer recorded in Acts. You see, they now head back home to see their friends and their family that have been praying for them. This third kind of prayer I call a prayer of praise and a prayer of asking. You see, the Bible gives to us this prayer meeting described in Acts chapter 4, verse 24. These are so important. I want to make certain you get them. The first prayer meeting is a 10-day prayer meeting of waiting upon the Lord. The second, on the way to the temple, in the name of Jesus with great authority. This third prayer meeting is actually a prayer meeting of praise and spontaneous worship and asking God. Let me show you. It's found in Acts chapter 4, verse 24. As soon as they, that is Peter and John, were freed, they returned to the other believers and they shared with them everything that had happened about how the man got healed, about how they got arrested, how they spent the night in jail, how God moved in a marvelous way. And now they were free and they ran home to tell all of their friends and the other believers of what God had done. The Bible says, when they heard the entire report, that is all the believers heard the report, the next thing they did is they lifted up their voices before God and they begin to pray. You know, one of the most important prayers that we can miss out on is what I call a prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Many years ago, I was the administrator for a mega church in Northern California. I served there for 16 years. Many of you have known me since those years. My very first day on assignment as the business administrator was to help deal with financial debt. It was devastating. The weekly obligation for the mortgage was 22,000 plus every single week. I've never served in any position that had such pressure as serving there. Every six months, we had to come up with a semi-annual payment, and that was overwhelming. We were always behind. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Most people don't know this. But I discovered the power of waiting upon the Lord. I discovered the power of what it is to pray with authority. And I discovered the power of praise in God's hand moving signs, wonders, and miracles. So here's what I did. Every six months, I was required as business administrator to work with the mortgage company to release the funds. We never had enough. But I would pray and fast for seven days. I did that every six months when that mortgage payment came due in a semi-annual payment. I actually did that for 16 years. Don't tell anybody. It was such a blessing for me. No one knew, no one on the team. I never told anyone in the congregation. It was just a power that I discovered in my life. Again, I call it asking and celebration and praise. Well, for the first 10 years, it was devastating. And then one day, 
things turned around and we were current. We rewrote the mortgage. It wasn't $22,000. It was less than $10,000 a week. And we were able to build a 2,500 seat auditorium. It was all kicked off with a $1 million donation and you're already ahead of me. That's right, the mortgage company, God moved on their heart and they gave the first $1 million gift in the history of the ministry. I'll never forget it. Here's what people didn't know about my personal prayer life is how I would fast and pray for seven days. After we were out of the woods, then I had to ask myself the question, Lord, the need is already met. What do I do now? And the Lord led me into one of the deepest, richest experience of my spiritual walk. I practiced that year after year. As long as I served there, I didn't have a need but I was still in pray and fast saying, God, thank you. Maybe you right now are walking through a time in your life where you are waiting upon the Lord. You'll find that kind of prayer powerful. You'll find it in Acts chapter one. Or maybe you come to a need and you're anointed with the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit and you can speak a word of healing a miracle or a sign or wonder, just like that. Or maybe you, you are like where I have been in my life, where I come to the place and I say, God, you just gave us miracle after miracle. What do I do now? I continue to pray. I continue to seek the Lord and I fast and I pray, both when I have a need and both when I'm thankful, all of my needs are met. Look at what it says in Acts chapter four. Oh Lord, hear the threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Oh, when you pray those prayers, remember what Jesus said. Some things only happen by prayer and fasting. Remember to pray and fast when you have a need. But remember to pray and fast when you were just released from prison, from bondage, from a devastating experience, and God just gave you a miracle. Remember to continue to seek him. And look at what happens in this prayer meeting. Again, underscore this. In Acts chapter 4, they're not waiting on the Holy Spirit in the outpouring. They're not praying with an authority that someone would be healed and here's the immediate need. No, they're at a place, the miracles have already been happened and they've already been released from prison. And they're actually in a prayer meeting where they have much to rejoice about, but they want more. They're, they're waiting upon God to do more and more and more. And they're saying, God, thank you for what you've already done. But we pray for more boldness, more signs, more miracles, more wonders. And do you know what happened at that prayer meeting? God moved. It's actually recorded in Acts chapter four. After their prayer, the place literally shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. This is very significant. You see the baptism of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit happened in Acts chapter two. There's no question Peter and John received the Holy Spirit when Jesus breathed upon them. The very day Jesus rose from the dead recorded in John 20. There's no question they were baptized in the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter two. But look at the beauty of this prayer meeting. These believers were filled with the Holy Spirit over and over and over again. I love this story. After this meeting, the place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with great boldness and great power and great authority. Well, I don't know where you're at in your walk with the Lord tonight, but I want to encourage you to just kind of assess, 
Maybe you're in a season of waiting upon the Lord like Acts 1. Maybe you're ready to be fully charged and pray in the authority of the name of Jesus for a friend or someone that has a need for a miracle in their life. Or maybe you're living with me in Acts chapter 4, seeking God for signs, wonders, and miracles. Oh, as you pray, expect God to shake the house as he shakes your heart. Well, I served in that ministry I mentioned earlier for 16 years. I saw mighty, mighty miracles that came about through prayer and fasting. Later, I would come to Antelope Christian Center. Again, this church was in terrible financial situations. I had no money. I didn't know what to do. But I began to pray and fast 40 days. Don't tell anybody I told you that. But I prayed and I fasted for 40 days. And out of that fast, the Lord spoke to me about a harvest of pumpkins. It's the silliest, craziest thing I've ever done in my life. But as the Lord led, the harvest festival was born. And year after year, somewhere between 5,000 and 10,000 boys to girls would come on campus. We have prayed with thousands and thousands of people. Chuck King himself have led over 500 people to the Lord, maybe closer to 800. It's been incredible what God has done through that pumpkin farm. Where did it come from? From prayer and fasting. I believe it. I know you do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But remember, remember, some things, some things only happen through prayer and fasting. My name is Pastor Bill. This is Antelope Christian Center Midweek Bible Study. Thank you so much for being a part. I'm going to post those scripture verses on this page so you can study them and the Holy Spirit can speak to your heart. Father God, I praise you that you have given us our salvation through your Son. That, Father, you have given us the Holy Spirit that we can be baptized, filled, and flowing. Thank you for the privilege of prayer, recognizing that when we pray, it's all in the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless, I pray, in Jesus' name. Always remember, God loves you, and so do I. You, you be blessed.